The following program is a production of the Fairfax Network, Fairfax County Public Schools. Welcome to Meet the Author. I'm your host, Emily Godfrey. I'm thrilled to be speaking with New York Times bestselling author, Rachel Renee Russell. Rachel writes successful book series, The Misadventure of Max Crumbly, and the hugely popular Dork Diaries series. Today we are celebrating 10 years of dorkiness. Dork Diaries turns 10 this June. Rachel, in the words of Nikki J. Maxwell. Squee! Yes. It's so exciting. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today to talk about your books. Well, thank you for having me. I am excited to be here, too. Also joining us via Skype are students from Greenbrier East Elementary School. Hello, Greenbrier. Hi. Hi. Thanks for being part of our birthday <laughs> celebration. So, Nick, so Rachel, mm -hmm. how does it feel to have 10 years under your belt with the Dork Diary series? It feels great, and it doesn't seem like 10 years. It seems more like maybe two or three years because we're having so much fun. Did you ever think that you would write 13 novels in 10 years? No, not at all, not at all. And it's, it's, it's uh, a lot of work, but I love it, and I love having children read the books and get excited, you know, about reading. So. Did you have a favorite one, like a favorite one that you ever you started with? Um, my favorite is always Dork Diaries book one and the newest that I'm working on. So right now it would be Dork Diaries book one and Dork Diaries book 13 because that was the one I just finished. Excellent. Well, our Greenbrier students are eagerly yeah. awaiting to ask you some questions. So let's take a few. Who is the first question for Rachel Renee Russell? How did you come up with the idea for the Dork Diaries series? Um, most of the ideas are based on real life events that happened to either me or my two daughters, Erin and Nikki. So we just sit down and we have a, a brainstorming session on what interesting that has happened to us that kids can relate to. So uh, again, most of the ideas are based on things that actually happened. Well, I think that that's really relatable. Mm -hmm. Like, thank you. That's very relatable. Mm -hmm. So we have another question from Greenbrier. Hi, what's your question? Um, if you were to describe the main character, Nikki, in one word, what would it be? Uh, I'd have to say dorky, <laughs> um, hence the whole concept and title. Uh, Nikki is dorky, but dorky is a very, very positive thing. That means she's creative, she's unique, she's friendly, she's smart, and she's very creative. So dorky would be my word. All right, let's do another question. Hi, what's your question? Has any part in the book ever happened to you in real life? If so, what part? Um, I'd say about 70% of what's in the book actually happened or was inspired by something that actually happened. Um, like, for example, let me think of Dork Diaries book one. Uh, the whole concept of Nikki moving into a new school and kids not being very friendly to her and there being a mean girl named Mackenzie. That actually happened to my daughters. We moved, um, I'm originally from Michigan and we moved from um, St. Joseph, Michigan to Kentwood Michigan and the new school there um, was great, but there were a couple of people at that school that were not very nice to Aaron and Nikki. And that was actually the inspiration for the entire book series. Really? So, exactly. Did you start writing it then? Um, I didn't start writing until the, my daughters graduated from high school and went into college because by then time, you know, they're not home. So I have a lot more free time on my hands. So I had extra time to actually start writing. And I wanted to write something that kids could relate to. So I thought I'll, you know, just kind of sneak into my daughter's lives right. and, and leaves a lot of Yeah, them. go with what you know. Yes, exactly. Things that happened to them became the inspiration for Dork Diaries. Well, we have another question from Greenbrier. Okay. Hi, what is your question? 
Did you have an annoying sister, and was she exactly like Brianna? <laughs> um, I have two sisters. Um, a younger sister, Kim, who's my manager now, and I have a, 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 a sister that I'm like three years older than and I we got along really well for the most part um, the inspiration for Nikki Maxwell and Brianna are my two daughters more so than my sisters and I would say my older daughter Erin is a lot like Nikki Maxwell and my younger daughter Nikki is a lot like Brianna so she's a little <laughs> buggy and, how do they crazy. feel about that comparison um, I think they're okay with it and and actually when I first uh, started the series I talked to them about you know using some of the events in their lives and they said they were fine with it as long as I didn't use the, the actual name so there oh, is actually good. a Mackenzie that terrorized Aaron and Nikki when they were younger but her name is not Mackenzie oh, okay I'll never ever tell you what her real name <laughs> is so so yes a lot of uh, uh, actual events in, inspired our Dark Diaries series well we have one more question right now from Greenbrier let's go back hi why is Mackenzie so mean? Um, Mackenzie is really mean because she's spoiled and she's self-centered and she wants to be the center of attention. So if anybody else is having a good day or accomplishing something great, she just wants it to be all about her. And there are a lot of people like that, not only in schools, but even as adults. Sometimes we work with people like that. So yeah. Mackenzie is... Um, actually a bully and pretty much a mean girl. Well, one of the things that I really like about the series is that by reading it, you can really kind of get an idea of different ways that you can uh, learn how to interact in those situations exactly. with different types of people. And exactly. it's a really good learning experience. Exactly. And that, that's part of um, the inspiration for me writing it is to not only inspire kids that are in that environment to stay strong and be confident in, your, in yourself and stand up, but to offer, you know, coping mechanisms. Yeah. And a lot of times you can, you know, kind of make a joke about it. Sometimes you'll have to talk to your parents or an adult or a teacher and report that if the behavior yeah, definitely. is like really out of hand. But basically just remain confident in yourself and realize that you are a good person regardless of what any mean person is telling you. That's a really great message. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, thanks, Greenbrier. Those were great questions, and we will come back to you a little later in the show. Do you have a question for Rachel Renee Russell? Join the conversation. Jot down the information at the bottom of your screen. We welcome your calls and tweets. As I mentioned earlier, Dork Diaries turns 10 in June. And to celebrate, every educator who registered for today's webcast has been entered in a random drawing to win one classroom set of Dork Diaries number 13 and one classroom set of Max Crumbly number one. We want to thank Simon & Schuster for their generous donation. We will notify the winner by email. So Rachel, we talked a little bit about this, but maybe you could have a, um, share some more details with us. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to write this series? Um, again, it was um, my daughters. Um, growing up, they uh, are, were really good kids. They did their homework. They were friendly, helpful, and whatever. But there were a couple of kids in their classrooms that always gave them a really, really hard time. Um, so when I decided to write a book, I wanted to write about uh, the challenges that you can face as kids, you know, either middle school and even elementary school these days. So that was the and, inspiration. And why did you choose to do it as a graphic novel? Because um, number one, uh, I love the illustration part of storytelling. So I wanted to make sure that was a big part of it. And it's also Nikki Maxwell's personal diary. Yes. And by Nikki Maxwell being an artist, I imagine that if she was going to sit down and write a diary, not only would she pour her heart out and tell us all of her thoughts and dreams and good times and bad times, but she would also draw a lot. And so that's why you see a lot of her crazy doodles and detailed pictures, because that's her hobby and what she loves to do. And I bet that some people might say that writing um, a, a graphic novel or a book with illustrations is easier. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Do you think that it adds a, a complication to the whole writing process? Um, I think the adding the illustrations is a little bit more difficult to me. Um, as far as just sitting down and writing the manuscript, that kind of goes quickly. Um, it takes more time to sit down and figure out how the 
um, illustrations are going to work and you have to make them funny and relevant and you know work with the story so to me anyway uh, at having the extra illustrations is a bit more challenging but I love it and can you talk a little bit about your illustrator oh okay the illustrator <laughs> of Dork Diaries is my uh, daughter Nikki and she's also the namesake for Nikki Maxwell, and I did ask Nikki if I could use her name, and she's like, oh, Mom, I would love that. That's wonderful. Yeah, How that's cool. super cool. So Nikki Maxwell is named after my daughter, Nikki Russell, and Nikki is uh, the illustrator of Dork Diaries. However, by training, she went to college and graduated as an elementary school teacher, so um, she taught grades one through three for probably about two years, and then when the Dork Diaries books um, were successful, and my publisher wanted to continue to release them, I asked if she would mind quitting her teaching job to come and um, illustrate Dork Diaries, and she agreed. So her full-time job is not teaching anymore, it's now that she's an illustrator. That's, that's super cool that mm -hmm. you guys get to work together. Yes. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about how you guys collaborate and decide on the illustrations or how that process works? So usually we work chapter by chapter. So for example, we're going to be starting Dork Diaries book 14 on Monday. So we'll sit down and figure out what's going to happen in the first chapter. And um, usually I'll come up with concepts myself. And other times I might talk to Nikki about it. Um, but I usually will write the first chapter. And then as we go through every couple of pages, we like to have an, illustrate, an illustration. So after I've written a couple of pages of the manuscript, I'll just write down an idea for an illustration. Then I'll write another couple of pages. Then I'll write down another idea. When I'm done with the chapter, I give that to Nikki. And Nikki will read it and look at my um, illustration suggestions. And sometimes she'll have even better ideas than I do. So after a week or so, she'll hand me back that chapter and it'll have maybe four or five illustrations. And once I see them, it's so exciting because yeah. now the story is actually coming alive. So I go back and I rewrite the second chapter again. <laughs> Basically the same material, but just making it a lot better, funnier, you know, um, adding more drama yeah. and whatever. So her artwork actually inspires my writing you know to, that's really so, neat how it's very cyclical yes exactly exactly and how do you get into the mind of a middle school student uh, that's, a, that's a scary yes, place to go but yes. you seem to go there a lot yes <laughs> uh, I channel uh, my inner uh, 14 year old or 13 year old and I still can relate to that um, working um, for the first eight years the I worked with both daughters Aaron and Nikki Erin has recently become published, and her, her book is How to Trick the Tooth Fairy. So now that she's published, she's kind of working on her own. So it's just Nikki and I that are doing the Dork Diaries books now. So um, we just uh, sit down and um, figure out where we're going to go and, you know, just go from there pretty much. And one of the themes that kind of resonates throughout the books um, in this series is that the outer appearance doesn't always match mm -hmm. what's happening on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, there are many other themes that we can talk about in, your, in the Dork Diary series as well, but could you talk a little bit about why you chose that theme to, to write about? Um, again, I was pulling from a lot of the experiences that my daughters had growing up, and um, their, their father is like six foot three or six foot four. He's really tall. So Aaron and Nikki are really tall, and they were really tall like in third and fourth grade. As a matter of fact, by the time they got into middle school, they were taller than the football player guys and taller than the basketball player oh. guys. So they got teased a lot, and they felt like they didn't really fit in. And so, again, I wanted my story to reflect, you know, some of the challenges they had of wanting to be popular and wanting to, you know, get invited to a lot of parties and wanting to be cool and a good dancer and all that stuff. But... It doesn't really happen. I mean, sometimes you're good at one thing or you may be popular or you may just have good friends. And I wanted it to be clear that it's all about being confident and having good relationships and being kind. Yeah. So that was kind of the thing that I was trying to communicate. Yeah. And do you have any um, examples from the story where a character has kind of dealt with that? Um, in Dork Diaries book two... Um, which is about parties. I don't, oh, yes. Tells from a not so popular, popular party pop girl. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Tells from a not so popular party girl. Yep, yeah, Dork Diaries book two. That is based on the fact um, that Aaron and Nikki 
were dying to get invited to parties, but they oh. never did. Oh, they no. Never did. So, you know, they would just have their own party and invite like their one or two best friends. But so that the inspiration for that, again, was based on Aaron and Nikki. Well, and how have the characters in Dork Diaries grown over the past 10 years? Um, I think Nikki Maxwell has probably grown the most. Um, when she first started at the school, she was very insecure. She uh, didn't consider herself to be very likable. She thought she'd never have really good friends, but Zoe and Chloe came along. Um, she was very intimidated by Mackenzie and afraid to stand up to her. And over the years, she's become more confident. She stands up to um, Mackenzie and she'll tell Mackenzie what she thinks in a nice way. And mm -hmm. sometimes they may, you know, throw insults back at each other, but. It um, happens. Yeah, it does, <laughs> exactly. But again, what's important is that she's standing up to Mackenzie. Um, Nikki Maxwell now will even stand up for other people. So if Mackenzie's giving somebody else a hard time, if it's a girl or guy at the, at the school, Nikki will stand, you know, come up and say, you yeah. know, just back off Nikki or, you know, or she'll go up the other person that, Nick, that Mackenzie was harassing and tell them, you know, just ignore her, she's, you know, whatever. So Nikki has grown in it. Now she's more confident, she believes in herself, and she stands up for other people as well. Did you see any parallel growth mm -hmm. with your own daughters? Oh, most definitely, yeah. most definitely. And um, so, yeah, by the time Aaron and Nikki graduated from high school, they were confident, beautiful young ladies and smart. And, and most dorks are super smart. So I'm like, That's you know, use that, <laughs> use, use that to your advantage as well. And they're kind people too, I think. And that's very important. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back to our Greenbrier students and take a few more of those questions. So go ahead, Greenbrier, we're ready for you. Are you so a practicing attorney? Uh, yes, I am. I'm originally from the state of Michigan and I'm a licensed attorney in Michigan. Um, however, I don't have clients anymore. I usually mostly use uh, my legal skills when I'm reviewing contracts and um, talking about legal issues that come up as an author in the publishing business. So yes, I'm still an, an attorney. All right, let's go to our next question. Hi. What is the coolest part about your job? The coolest part about my job are you students and all of the <laughs> readers. I just love, love, like if I could just get up in the morning and go somewhere and sit and talk to students and sign books and answer questions, um, I would just do that every day instead of writing. So my favorite part of my job are the students and the readers and parents, teachers, librarians, you know, the, Thank the, you. the people are the best part of my job. All right, we have one more question, hi. Hi, are you gonna make a series about Brandon's series? That is a really, really good idea. Um, I, you've suggested it, I think, kind of, and I've had other people that have mentioned that as well, too. So maybe in the next couple of years, if, if it's not an actual series, we'll maybe do a special book um, about Brandon. Kind of like our Dork Diaries book nine, um, Tales from a Not-So-Dorky Drama Queen, is when Mackenzie, um, finds Nikki's diary. So maybe Brandon will find Nikki's diary and he'll write in it or something. But yeah, I think a Brandon story will be very, very cool. Can you tell us a little bit about the Max Crumbly series? The Misadventures of Max Crumbly was inspired um, by, again, uh, my readers. When we would do book signings, um, a lot of the guys would come up and, you know, they're big Dork Diaries fans, but they were like, why don't you do a book? Kind of like what was yeah. just success suggested. Um, either Brandon or another character. So I decided to do Max Crumley, and Max Crumley was originally homeschooled, so his challenge um, was going from homeschooling into a brand new school. So it's kind of a similar story as Nikki, and he's an artist because we had to have that illustration part of the diary. So Max Crumley um, is starting a new school, and things are going well. However, there's this guy whose name, um, his nickname is Thug, but he has a nasty habit of shoving Max Crumley into his locker, and one day, when there's a three-day uh, weekend, I think around Labor Day or whatever, he shoves uh, Max into his locker, and school doesn't start again until Tuesday, so Max is stuck in his locker for a three-day weekend. Possibly oh. he's stuck in his locker for a three-day weekend. So the Max Crumley book is about him getting out of his locker, but being locked inside the school at midnight. So it's kind of like Home like the, Alone yeah, at that, school, if the Home Alone movie was kind of 
my inspiration for that. So I feel like every kid has had that dream. Mm, yes. Or nightmare. <laughs> nightmare. I'm yes, like, I don't exactly. know. It could be fun to be yes, locked inside the exactly. school. Yeah. So the, the, the misadventures of Max Crumley is about Max Crumley ending up locked inside of the school overnight and him trying to escape. And then he finds out that something is going on at the school. Oh. Yeah, there's something really bad going on and he discovers it. And then he steps in and is a hero. And then he has to try to get home. And then he has a friend that's helping him out. So there's just a lot of adventure. So what inspired you to write the, this story? Like, was it Home Alone? Um, yeah, Home Alone. <laughs> I just love the fact that he's, you know, having to deal with the burglars and the, he doesn't have his parents there. So yeah, Home Alone was definitely the inspiration. I, that's my favorite movie too. So. It's a really good one. Mm -hmm. It's a classic. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, do you write both of the series at the same time? Um, I write, I work on them separately. So I'll write, I just finished Max Crumley book three, Masters of Mischief, which will be coming out June 4th. And I just finished that maybe about three or four weeks ago. And then I'm going to start on Dork Diary. So I, I spend maybe four to six months on each book. So when we finish Dork Diary's book 14, then we'll probably go back to the Max book four. And is and it hard? Back and forth. Is it hard to keep the storyline straight as you as you have written so many now? Um, writing them is not so difficult. My challenge is, and not and keeping the story straight is fairly easy too, because I can pretty much tell you what each of the book is about. Like yeah. Basically, I have a tr problems with all the titles oh. <laughs> because there I think there are fifteen. Dirk Diaries books, if we count the two little wor the workbook and the personal diary, and then there's now three Max Crummy. So that's like 18 books. And again, I can oh tell you the 18 storylines, but I have a hard time remembering the 18 subtitles. So that's <laughs> always my challenge. Do you have any um, good tricks for organizing all of, these, all of these things or your ideas when you're writing that we could share with students? No, I, and I probably should because <laughs> after, after the 18th book and the 19th book and the 20th book, I'll have to, so, but I don't write anything down anywhere. And sometimes when authors write series, especially if it's like fantasy, yeah. then they tend to have, they call it a Bible, but basically it's just a summary of the books and the characters and some of the major events. And I've not done that yet. And it might be time for me to start, you know, doing that. But right now it's pretty much all in my head. Well, we have an email question we're going to go to. Okay. This email is from Christine and she says, you write so many books. What technique do you use to keep your plot line straight? Right. Um, actually, it's not very hard, only because it's Nikki's life, and then things just happen to her. And a lot of it is the books are based on one month, and maybe that's why it's easy for me to kind of um, keep the storyline straight, because in September, it was all about school. And, and so book one was mostly school. Book two was October. Um, so that was a bit about um, Halloween party and birthday parties. Book three was into Thanksgiving and book four was Christmas. So that's why it's easy for me to kind of, and then of course, you know, each month. And now we're into the summer. So it's about what she's doing in the summer. And so it's kind of easy for me, you know, to, to keep it all straight plot wise, you know, and, and, and themes and what happens in each book. It's just the titles that get kind of challenging for me. So I read online mm -hmm. that there might be a movie happening. Is yes, that true? Yes, Can you tell us some details yes, or anything? Well, we, uh, we originally um, had an option with Lionsgate, and that was signed maybe about five years ago, and that expired. So we're all done. It's not going to be anything with Lionsgate. I can't tell you a lot of details, but um, it's a new company, and all these years I've been wanting, wanting, wanting a theatrical release, which is when it's in the movie. Yeah. Not TV, not streaming. I want a movie. In you know theatrical, yeah. release. And we have a company that's interested in a movie and theatrical release. So I'm really, really excited about that. That is very and exciting. And we'll be going to meetings, I think, in the next couple of weeks. And you know, so once we get everything signed, then I will announce it. But again, it's going to be a movie. Well, we got the scoop here yes. on Meet the Author, exactly. and so that's exactly. so exciting. Yeah. So that's I can't like wait the to see best that. and most fantastic thing that's happened to us in the last. You know, a few years. Is, I know many readers who are going to like be super fanned mm -hmm. out about this. Yeah. And it's going to be a really musical excited. too. I can tell you that. Oh it will wow! Be a musical, a yes. musical. Yes. That's so cool. Yes. Yeah, so. All right, we're going to have to keep our our eyes open for yes. this. Yeah. Well, we have a little bit more time, so we are going to head back 
to um, some more questions from our Greenbrier okay. students. So let's go to them now. Hi, Greenbrier. Will you, will you continue writing more Dark Diaries books? As long as you guys are reading Dark Diaries, I will continue to write them. So, you know, hopefully it'll be another 10 years. We've just finished 10 years and I'll be doing this for another 10. And then I, I'd love that at some point if I want to retire that my younger daughter Nikki will be able to take over. You know, That's so. very nice. So I think we have one more question from Greenbrier. Hello, mm -hmm. hi, what is your question? <laughs> Hi, as an educator, I'm wondering if you have tips for our students to help improve their writing. Um, probably the most important thing with writing is to finish it. And even as an author, I've, I have like, what, 18 books. It's still always a challenge to finish it. So I would say, um, Number one, write about something you're excited about, something that you're passionate about. If you're like into animals or sports or, you know, whatever your hobby is, write about something you're excited about. And number two, try your hardest to finish it. So those would be my two. And have fun. The writing and whatever you're writing about should be enjoyable, fun, and exciting. So if, if you're writing something and it's boring and you don't want to finish it, you're probably writing about the wrong thing. So pick a new topic and something that hopefully excites you. Can you tell us a little bit more about your inspiration for uh, the Tales from a Not-So-Happy Birthday? Um, the inspiration for Tales for a Not-So-Happy Birthday was, was again, my daughters. Um, my older daughter, Erin, wanted to have a party. This is, again, based on what happened when yeah. she was younger. And it, it started out just a, kind of a sleepover with her couple of best friends. And then they all sat down and started thinking, well, you know, this would be a great opportunity to, you know, have a bunch of kids over and maybe they can become more popular and that. So it kind of got bigger and bigger and more expensive and until it was like this $10,000. And I'm like, no, we're not having a $10,000 party at the local country club, you know. So they were disappointed and had to scale everything back again. So again, um, Dark, so that book was based on something that had happened in real life. And that's what happened with Nikki's story. I mean, with her party, it starts out where Nikki's just happy to have Zoe, Chloe come over and have a sleepover and go to the movie and eat pizza. And then when they all get together, Zoe and Chloe want something bigger and it kind of snowballs until it gets way out of hand and they have to kind of figure out how they're going to reel things in and, and have Nikki have a happy birthday after all of the drama and everything. That does seem like a lot of drama. Yeah, it is. It is. So do you, um, did you have a lot of books that you read when you were growing up or I were loved, you a big loved, reader? Oh, I loved books. For me, me as a child, I have a big imagination. Um, and as a child, it was probably even bigger. And to me, whenever I would read a book, it would take me on a trip. It was like I would leave, I would like cuddle up in my room usually and um, read. And I, when I was in the book, I felt like I was not in my room. I was like wherever the story was, be it New York City or a fantasy place or whatever. So I loved reading. And the highlight of my life was um, back when um, the teachers would give us these little weekly readers. And in the back, there was like a book form order where we could order oh, books yeah, elastic. I think, yeah. back then. And I would like order 10 books and I would take it home. And my parents would actually buy them. That's so, awesome. Yeah, whenever the books came in, I'd always have like a dozen books or six books. Or, so I love, loved reading. And did that inspire your desire to be a writer as well? Yes, I think so, because I, I just loved reading so much. And um, initially, I, my first choice was to become an author. But when I was in college, um, my professors didn't think I was a very good writer. So I thought, well, I'll become an attorney. <laughs> you know, I still have to write, but it's, that's a different writing. It's not creative writing. So, um, yeah, I've always loved writing and reading and well thank you so much we're going to thank, thank our our um, students from Greenbrier Elementary School thank you for joining our birthday celebration today thank you bye guys <sighs> And thank you so much for talking thank with you. us today. It's been a real pleasure talking about your books. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. If you would like to learn more about Rachel Renee Russell, visit her website. To learn more about our upcoming programs, visit the Fairfax Network. For the Fairfax Network, I'm Emily Godfrey. 
And now, the final word goes to our good friend and former show host who retires soon. We wish you all the best. Take it away, Della. Keep reading, keep writing, and keep dreaming. What?